First Hour on VTV News. National Assembly discussed draft votes law. Vietnam participate in St. Petersburg International Book Fair. And in a war news, Iran declares five days of warning for president. Broadcasting from Hanoi, the capital of Vietnam, VTV News starts right now. Hello, it's 3 p.m. local time in Hanoi. You're watching VTV News. The National Assembly convened a plenary session on the morning of May 21st as part of the 15th Legislature 7th sitting. At the session, deputy discussed several contentious sections of the draft law on roads. More to follow. The deputies agreed with some of the draft law revisions. However, they suggested that the scope of the legislation and the regulations on expressway infrastructure and transportation business must be clarified. The draft law review shows that it has yet to stipulate the limits of road traffic safety corridors and the costs of managing, operating, exploiting, using, and maintaining traffic infrastructure. There are also no regulations on associated underground infrastructure or overhead works. The draft law also divided opinions on regulations on land funds for road construction in urban areas to meet urban development and reduce traffic pressure. Urban areas cannot develop forever by building new things or expanding roads in inner cities. We need solutions for effective traffic organization, limiting personal means of transport. Therefore, I suggest that the law should not go too much into detail about the proportion of land reserved for road infrastructure for each type of urban area. I propose we add regulations on the minimum ratio of land for road traffic in urban areas, including road construction, bus station sidewalks, passenger pickup and drop-off stops for buses, taxis, parking lots, and logistics centers. This morning, deputies also voiced their opinions on standard highway regulations, expansion and upgrade guidelines, and completing a national database on traffic infrastructure assets. Prime Minister Phạm Minh Chính has issued a directive requiring ministry branches and localities to continue simplifying administrative procedure for the public and businesses. The Prime Minister requested ministers, heads of the ministerial level agencies and agencies under the government to reform administrative procedures while developing legal documents. The Prime Minister also requested that ministry branches and localities focus on reducing and simplifying administrative procedures related to identification cards, effectively deploying the innovative one-door policies and focusing resources to accelerate the digitization of records and settlement results. He further ordered that the prime resolutions of feedback and recommendations from citizens and businesses. The Prime Minister also requested the administrative address focus on Project 06 and ensure its ability to convert to only using VNEID when carrying out procedures and providing public services in the electronic environment from July 1st. This month, 18 banks increased their saving interest rate beyond the 6% per year mark. Four banks increased interest rate twice during the month. Currently, the highest 18-month saving interest rate is HD Bank at 6.2% per year. According to expert, commercial banks must raise deposit interest rate to match the economy increasing capital need and at the same time reduce investment pressure in high-risk fields. There is often a two to three month delay when mobilizing economic capital. Therefore, although deposit interest rate increased slightly, lending interest rate have remained comparatively the same. Vietnam has set a goal to become a carbon neutral by 2050, which required industry to eliminate carbon emissions 
for businesses, not only is implementing emission reduction policies part of their social responsibility towards sustainable development, but achieving carbon neutrality also holds many opportunities. Many emission reduction projects are being implemented by businesses to achieve both benefits and fulfill social responsibility. The carbon collection and purification system has helped this factory save more than 1.96 million US dollars annually in fuel costs. The factory is also looking to harness carbon in the production of beverages, meat processing, packaging, freezing and refrigeration. This year we will complete phase one of the CO2 collection project. This project is expected to supply 100 tons of CO2 for food production daily, bringing in a revenue of about 3 to 4 million dollars annually. According to the National Strategy on Climate Change, Vietnam aims to have all facilities with annual greenhouse gas emissions equivalent to 2,000 tons of carbon reduced by 2030, and by 2050 to have facilities producing gas emissions equivalent to 200 tons of carbon start implementing the same step to reduce emission counts. This means that right now, businesses need to start building a specific roadmap. Following at the national target of achieving carbon neutrality up by 2050, we have established a working group on energy transition to produce a step-by-step -step roadmap for reducing emissions. Sooner or later, all businesses must comply and reduce emissions so it is better to begin the reduction process only. This means more time to develop long-term strategy to participate in demanding markets. Participating in the carbon neutral process helps businesses gain more trust from partners and customers, as more people are interested in green, environmentally friendly products. It is also an opportunity to participate in global supply and value chains. Cashew trees are among those that provide the highest carbon credit value. One cashew tree can absorb 400 kilograms of carbon dioxide over its lifetime. If grown according to international standards, every 2.5 cashew trees will generate one carbon credit. Recognizing that potential, Bingfoot Province is actively implementing the replanting cashew orchard project to create carbon credits. In recent years, both the yield and price of cashews have declined. Crop failures, price drops and pest infestations have caused many cashew farmers in Bingfu to switch to durian or other crops, but none have been successful. Facing these difficulties, a cashew growing cooperative was established to facilitate the creation of carbon credits from the cashew cultivation project. <laughs> Our cooperative, including my family and relative, manages over 20 hectares, but the carbon credit program standard is at least 200 hectares. There are many other local cashew farmers, so we will disseminate the necessary information and encourage them to participate. The cultivation area must meet international standards to create carbon credits for cashew trees at 120 US dollars per credit or more. This involves reducing carbon dioxide emissions related inputs and ensuring that cashew cultivation is organic. If we do not develop a carbon market, the province will lose 1 billion US dollars from the cashew industry. It will be difficult to support farmers and businesses, and a cashew brand associated with green transition and carbon credits will not be established. Developing cashew cultivation areas to create carbon credits will help improve the lives of cashew farmers, contribute to a social stability in rural areas, and resolve local labor issues. Vietnam's agricultural product industry is showing signs of improvement. Since the start of the year, Vietnam has exported more than 1.8 billion US dollar of fruit, an increase of more than 32 percent over the same period last year. One surprising factor behind this increase is detentions in international shipping, which has made four Asian markets the top importers of Vietnamese fruit. More to follow. Due to transport disruption of goods from South America and the Middle East, South Korea increased imports of Vietnamese fruits by more than 60 percent in the first four months of 2024. 
This market has surpassed the U.S., becoming Vietnam's second largest fruit importer. Many businesses that frequently export to East Asian markets still reported good growth. We plan to maintain our key customers so that they account for about 60 to 70 percent of our revenue. Our key markets are still Japan, South Korea, and Southeast Asia countries. In addition, the Chinese love for durian remains the main driving force for the growth of the fruit and vegetable industry. If Vietnamese frozen durian is approved for official export, durian export turnover will increase its total export value by 30 percent each year. 2024 will be more favorable than last year due to Vietnam's increased output, attributed to the expansion of growing areas from 400 hectares codes to 700 area codes. The Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development. The Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development is negotiating to export frozen durian. According to the Vietnam Fruit and Vegetable Association, international shipping tensions will affect fruit exports to the European and U.S. markets. However, the Australian and especially the Asian market will continue to report strong increases. It is forecast that fruit and vegetable exports could earn 7 billion U.S. dollars this year. And before moving on to some other news, let's take a look at foreign exchange rate for today, May the 21st. Up next on VTV News, memorial and burial ceremony for 12 Vietnamese marchers repatriated from Laos. And Vietnam participate in St. Petersburg International Book Fair. A memorial and burial ceremony took place this morning at Hue City Martyrs Cemetery, Thuyen Hue Province, in honor of 12 Vietnamese volunteer soldiers and experts who died in Laos. Their remains were discovered by Team 192 and recovered during the 2023-2024 dry season. With respect and gratitude for the great contributions of the martyrs, the delegates remember the heroes and martyrs who sacrificed their life for peace, independence, and happiness of the people of the two countries. The sacrifices of the martyrs will forever be a shining example for future generations to learn from and continue to build the special friendship between the peoples of Vietnam and Laos. The 19th St. Petersburg International Book Fair was held from May 16 to 19 at Palais Square in Russia's northern capital. Over 250 Russian and international booksellers took stalls, but new Vietnamese publications still made a notable impression at the event. The People's Newspaper exhibited a wide range of books and newspapers, backing a prime location for its book fair debut. The display garnered attention thanks to the red Vietnamese flag and images of President Ho Chi Minh. Numerous Vietnamese publications, Russian translated books, and books by Russian authors about Vietnam were displayed. The highlights of our booth is the introduction of books about the party, Uncle Ho, the Điện Biên Phu campaign, and General Võng Nguyên Giáp. Notably, the Russian translated works and articles of General Secretary Nguyễn Phú Trọng have drawn many Russian scholars to our booth for research source material. The St. Petersburg International Book Fair, first held in 2006, is a major event for book lovers and professional publishers. Vietnam's presence at this exhibition in recent years is expected to foster cultural exchange, enhance mutual understanding between the people of both countries, and contribute to developing a friendly cooperative relationship between Vietnam and Russia. 
What impressed and delighted us most was the image of President Ho Chi Minh reading the People's Newspaper, which featured pictures of Lenin and Stalin. When the governor of St. Petersburg visited their booth, the Vietnamese delegation printed and gifted this photo. This was indeed a precious gift. Many Russians liked Vietnamese publications and wanted to buy them, but the quantity was limited. I worked at a publishing house for 10 years, where we received orders for many classic Russian literary works, like Pushkin and Lermontov, to be sent to Vietnam. Today, I am delighted to have become acquainted with many modern Vietnamese publications. As part of this year's International Book Fair, the Vietnamese booth featured a special cultural and artistic program by Vietnamese artists and singers living in Russia. This event is one of the activities of Vietnam Week currently taking place in St. Petersburg, commemorating the 134th anniversary of President Ho Chi Minh's birth. On Tuesday morning, heavy rain continued, forcing red sand from high hills to inundate a section of Huynh Thuc Khang Street, Phan Thiet City, Binh Thuận Province. As a result, many motorbikes and cars became stuck fast and could not be pulled down. A 350-meter section of the roadway is under sand, reaching depth up to almost 1.3 meters. No casualties have been reported. Meanwhile, sand is also blocking Whitney Chiu Street. Thick mud and sand on the roadway trapped three cars. A kilometer-long section of roadway was affected by mud, sand, and flooding. The red sand buried a house nearly a hill and 10 motorbikes parked nearby. Local authorities arrived promptly to monitor the situation and requested reinforcements and heavy plant machinery to clear the roadway. The Mekong Delta is a region very vulnerable to the impacts of climate change. 95% of the region water resources are provided by the upper Mekong River, with only 5% being endogenous. Most of this water flows into the sea. Are therefore preserving water for the Delta is both an urgent and long-term task, especially during the dry season. The Mekong Delta is highly susceptible to climate change. It relies significantly on the upper Mekong River for 95% of its water resources, with only 5% being locally sourced. Much of this water drains into the sea. Hence, safeguarding water for the Delta, particularly during the dry season, is both an urgent task and essential for its long-term sustainability. The area affected by saltwater intrusion is expanding. In response, Carmel farmers have converted over 40,000 hectares to rice and shrimp cultivation, with notably high efficiency. Nonetheless, the resultant damage and risks are substantial, with some years seeing losses of up to 50% of the area. We have divided water resources into three production areas, salty, fresh, and brackish, appropriate for the impacts of climate change. This system would manage both salt and freshwater sources, ensuring adequate supply for each designated area. The current water levels in the Mekong River suffice for safe irrigation across approximately 700,000 to 800,000 hectares of rice fields. Thus, rice cultivation, coupled with green growth practices or the rice shrimp model have emerged as preferred approaches. Conserving water is important. This includes appropriate production conversion. It is necessary to retain the long-standing water storage resources in the Mekong Delta. It's projected that the existing irrigation system can hold between 2.5 to 3 billion cubic meters of water. The Mekong Delta does not lack water. The challenge lies in retaining water for year-round use. Every year on May 22nd, the world celebrates the International Day for Biological Diversity. It is an opportunity to highlight the crucial importance of biodiversity for the planet Earth and to raise awareness of the urgent need to preserve it. At Vietnam Cà Mau Cape National Park, many efforts to regenerate natural forests are being carried out to preserve the precious biodiversity values of Vietnam and the world. Discovering a part of the enclosure fence was damaged. Staff of the Carmo Cape National Park reinforced and repaired the damage during their patrol. This task is carried out all year round, but the peak period is mostly in June and July. 
This is the harvest season of Avicennia plants. The plants bear fruits and seeds in August. We usually take this time to prepare, so they will grow strongly despite the negative impact of climate change. These fences work as a technical measure to delineate and promote natural forest regeneration. Fences have been constructed since 2020. The area of natural forest regeneration has reached more than 600 hectares. We built closed U-shaped fences to manage and protect the area as well as prevent people from entering the area to exploit aquatic species. It works as an indicator to let me know that in this area, the solution of zoning and promoting regeneration is implemented. After four years of implementation, of the first 55 hectares of area for cultivation, 38 hectares have been chosen for forestry development. Compared to traditional afforestation methods, the survival rate of this method is lower. The zoned forest area is considered to contain higher biodiversity values. Naturalized forests are a form of indigenous ecology as naturalized forests are home to many tree species and animals. Planted forests require attention. In the process of planting, we slow down the spread of invasive species. The quality of planted forests is definitely not equal to the quality of cultivated forests in terms of biology and environment. Carmo Cape National Park is Vietnam's fifth Ramsar site and is recognized by UNESCO as a world biosphere reserve with more than 400 species, of which more than 40 are rare species threatened with extinction. The zoning and promotion of natural regeneration of mangrove forests helps preserve habitats, expand the habitat of endemic creatures and, thereby, preserve biodiversity values of Vietnam and the whole world. Hoi An City is on the list of the world top 13 best places to travel to in July, according to British magazine Time Out. The magazine specified July as the ideal time for globetrotters streaking uh, cross-country adventures. It emphasized the outdoor uh, Vietnam Central Coast with Hoi An emerging as a top vacation destination for many. The ancient city possesses pristine beaches such as Ku Lao Cham Beach and Bang Cơ Đại and Hambi. Beyond its unspoiled natural landscape, Hoi An is also known for its ancient street, which UNESCO recognizes as a World Cultural Heritage Site. Coming up next in on War News, Iran declares five days of mourning for president. And according to Middle Cat Valley Water Purification Ceremony. Iran Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei has declared five days of national mourning to honor President Rashid. The United Nations Security Council also held a minute of silence for late Iranian president. Turkey, Iraq, and Pakistan have each announced a day of national mourning to express their condolences to the Iranian people and government. Iran has established a high-level committee to investigate and clarify the cause of the incident. According to Turkey's Minister of Transport, the helicopters that crashed either did not activate its emergency beacon system or was not equipped with such a system. Meanwhile, an extraordinary election to choose Iran's new president will be held on June 28, following the tragic death of Iranian President Ebrahim Raisi in a helicopter crash in East Azerbaijan province. According to the Iranian election authorities, the Guardian Council has been asked to register presidential candidates by May 28. Karim Khan, the chief prosecutor of the International Criminal Court ICC, announced on Monday that he has requested the ICC issue arrest warrant for top Israeli and Hamas official due to action taken during the more than seven-month-long conflict in Gaza. Both the Israeli government and Hamas have criticized and opposed the ICC prosecutor request. Prosecutor Khan has applied for arrest warrant for the Israeli Prime Minister and Defense Minister, as well as the political leader of Hamas in Gaza. The commander-in-chief of Hamas, Arp Winged, and the head of Hamas Political Bureau. An ICC panel of judges is scheduled to review Prosecutor Khan's request for arrest warrant. 
The Delhi region of India has experienced its fourth consecutive day of extreme heat, which sicked at a 15 weather station in the capital region, recording temperatures above 46 degrees Celsius. The Delhi Directorate of Education issued a circular directing all schools to close and announce an early summer vacation with immediate effect. The heat wave struck Delhi on May 17, where maximum temperature exceeded 46 to 45 degrees Celsius at nine regional stations. The India Meteorological Department has warned that peak temperatures could rise to 48 degrees Celsius in the coming days. This severe heat has prompted authorities to issue a red alert, urging residents to remain extremely cautious and take necessary precautions. The 10th World Water Forum 2024 is being held in Bali, Indonesia from May the 18th to 25th with the theme Water for Shared Prosperity. The forum featured numerous engaging site events, including Milogat, a deeply spiritual Balinese religious ceremony that honored water, purified participants, and praised for the cleanliness of the sea. In the following story, let's join the Balinese water purification ceremony. The Melukat ceremony aims to spiritually cleanse and purify the body and soul of the Balinese people. The ceremony begins with prayers and chants led by a Hindu priest, offering tributes to the god of water, the ruler of the seas and oceans. Sacred dances such as the Topeng Penasar and Sangyang Dadari are performed on a stage near the beach, showcasing the beauty and richness of Balinese culture. These dances express the hope for the sea to remain clean and sustainable, ensuring prosperity for humanity. At the same time, the rituals demonstrate Indonesia's commitment to protecting nature, especially water resources. The water purification ceremony in Bali has deep symbolic meaning. Let us take the spirit of this ceremony to form and strengthen bonds between community members, foster solidarity and cooperation, and respect for nature. Through this ceremony, Indonesia aims to introduce international delegates to the unique culture of Indonesia, especially Bali. I am really happy to have a chance to take part on this event. For me, this is the first time in Indonesia, and I'm really happy. And if everything is goes well, I will present in a section. Water purification is a way to get the water from every sources. If it is not pure, to purify it and use it for drinking. And this is the main living uh, needed things for human beings. The dances and rituals at this ceremony also offer blessings and wishes for the successful and smooth proceedings of the World Water Forum in Bali. And now as usual, let's continue with the weather forecast. And that's all the news for today. To rewatch the program, you can log on to vitvigo.vn or download a mobile application Vitvigo. Thanks for watching and goodbye for now.